So hello, my dear sisters and brothers in the Dharma. Here I am with Dr. Kunzan Doma, and uh, I will do a small and short interview so you can understand a bit of her work and especially who is Dr. Kunzan Doma. So thank you, Dr. Kunzan Doma, for receiving me here in your uh, consultory. consultory. And uh, I want to really ask you some questions that I think our guests are really interested to hear. Uh, you are known because you help a lot of women, uh, especially in the gynecology. And uh, you help many deliveries, many women delivery. You also help post delivery. So it's very, very important work for the community, not only for medical work. So please tell us, how did you start to have interest in gynecology? How did this happen in your life? How did you start to have this interest? Where did you begin to study? When did you finish your study? And when did you start your practice? Please. Hello, namaste. I'm Dr. Kunsang Dorma Sherpa, as Sonia Gomez mentioned. Yeah, we are very good friends. Thanks for the interview. <laughs> Most welcome. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So actually, um, when I started my career, as uh, when I started uh, part of uh, study medicine, my mother, uh, she had a cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, you should go for the uh, eye surgeon. She, she never liked me to become a gynecologist. Mm. She said, early morning to see that part is not good. Uh. Better you go for oh. eye surgery so that you can give a, a um, eyesight for many blind people. That is very blessing also. So I thought of doing the, of the being an ophthalmologist for time being. But when I finish my graduation from Russia, and I did uh, my internship in the maternity hospital uh, and the big uh, government hospital we have that is a uh, Parukkar Prasthikriya where they have a lot and lots of uh, deliveries, surgeon and everything. So when I was working there, so I found out that many ladies are dying while they are giving birth after birth they have a severe uh, bleeding and things like that so but that time my mother was not already passed so i thought yeah i should go for this so I that know. i can save mother and the child so your main purpose was to save mothers and children yes. because you realize a lot of deliveries were yeah. happening and many problems Probably, during yeah. the delivery that really yeah. touched your yeah. heart and you felt that you should be uh, following gynecology. Yeah. You are almost crying here. <laughs> yes, you are. This, she's really a bodhisattva. You really don't have idea. She is. You cannot imagine the great work this doctor, Kunzam, this great lady did for so many women. And if we have so many wonderful children that have born, even uh, some very special children, it is thanks to this lady, this Dr. Kunzan, wow. which is an honor to have a friend like her, you don't imagine. Anyway, please tell us more. When did you start to work? Please. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have tissue paper. Yeah, I tissue. <laughs> please, when did you start to work? Please. Uh, I started uh, working um, since uh, I think now it's almost, almost two decades. So I, uh, I did, Two decades? Yeah. Means 40 years ago. Uh, yeah, not uh, two decades, it was 20 years ago. Oh, 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was working at that time. I did uh, our internship in a different hospital, of the uh, in a different hospital. Mm -hmm. After that, I started my uh, work at a surgeon. Surgeon, uh, yeah. So, so first work as gynecologist? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. So I was doing the, just after finishing my um, uh, graduation, I work as a general physician kind of thing but oh, i was yes. looking after all this uh, mother yeah. and children and mothers for uh, counseling about uh, family planning contraceptions and yeah for after that and then uh, working for seven years so i thought of uh, going for my further education for the 
uh, master in gynecology. So first you work as a general physician. Yeah. Then you work in that seven years, but always searching and searching for trying to work in gynecology. Yeah, yeah. And then you decide to do your master in gynecology. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And then when you finished your master in gynecology. Yeah, I work in a different hospital. Mm -hmm. A uh, different hospital in uh, so uh, that um, uh, after that at the same time I was also working at the surgeon. Oh, see, so uh, very important, Dr. Kunzan Dolma. She worked as gynecologist in Shishin Clinic that belongs to Shishin Monastery. Yeah. Please. Yeah, and very then good. and then. Uh, after the, uh, I finish, uh, yeah. Then, for for time being, I uh, I was uh, uh, there for as a managing director. So for the last year, where before COVID, mm -hmm. so during the COVID time, it was shut down, closed down. Mm -hmm. So I thought of uh, having my own clinic so that uh, our local people can assist my service. So the main intention of my uh, opening my clinic is not only to serve the uh, ladies, but uh, to serve the community, especially to prevent the diseases, because most of the people, they come to us at the last stage of the disease, so it is really difficult for me, so we could not help. So I thought of if they can come at the early stage and we can detect any diseases so that we can prevent many diseases. So that's how I initiated my clinic. Uh, so here beside me, gynecologist, we have a uh, other specialty like a gastroenterologist, pediatrician. Uh, so we have um, lab facilities, uh, ultrasound, eco, ECG, everything. And um, yoga classes. Yeah. So, uh, my, so I love. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I love uh, ladies to have a, a normal delivery rather than going for C section. So I encourage them to go to do uh, some exercise before delivery so that they have a smooth delivery. This is very important. So let's go back on time and on Dr. Kunsan's words. So she first started working in Shishan Clinic as a gynecologist. And with the passing of the years, uh, one year before COVID, she was the director, the manager of Shishin Clinic, right? Yeah, yeah. Then one year after COVID, clinic had to close, then uh, also clinic closed. Then she decided to start her own clinic. Now she has her own clinic with all yeah. these specialties that she mentioned, but not only with the goal to having patients and a private business, but to keep serving the community, because that was precisely what happened in Shishin Clinic, yeah. right? Shishin Clinic was there not only to serve the monks and the nuns, yeah. but also the community, community here around Bauda and in Bauda. So Dr. Kunzan felt very deeply in her heart that closing the clinic was not good to the community. And then she decided to open her own clinic and st still receiving these people and still serving and helping her community but this time in her own clinic. This is very important. And let's go even back, because this is also very important because we are female. Yeah. Who decide to start Session Clinic? Who decide? Yes. To, to start? Session Clinic. I think uh, Rabzam Rinpoche, Matila, and the Dominic Mamisha. Yeah. Dominic Marcia. But before them, there was a lady that wanted yeah. to do an hospice. Yeah. Who yeah. is this lady? Ah, uh, this is our um, Dungu Kenji, Kandru. Kandru of Dungu Kenji. She used to be a Tibetan, um, Tibetan traditional uh, doctor who used to uh, look after the Dungu Kenji languages. Mm -hmm. So she has to, uh, she used to, I, I heard from the Rabja Rinpoche. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. she used to prepare medicine by herself yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yes. So in her desire, she wanted to have a clinic. Mm. So that's how it was like a dream to yeah, Kandrola yeah. to have a hospice. Yeah, no, uh, a clinic. Kandrola, yeah, clinic. clinic. But hospice, uh, uh, Rabja Rinpoche and Matthew, yeah. they, they, uh, they thought of the importance of hospice. 
when the country passed away. So that, that's how hospice was started. So we must say that Shishen Clinic started with uh, Kandrula, previous Delgo Kinsey Rinpoche wife. It was her dream mm -hmm. to have a clinic and then her grandson. Yeah. And Matula is Matthew Ricard, for those who don't know. So Matthew Ricard and Shishen Rattram Rinpoche decide to build this clinic. Yeah. And then later, Shishen Rajam Rinpoche pay homage to his grandmother yeah. and we, they put their uh, yeah. beautiful photo of Kandrola. So this is very important because this means also this clinic yeah. was the dream of a woman. Like this clinic now, Dr. Kunsan yeah. clinic also was the dream of Dr. Kunsan. So you see, this is amazing. Please tell us. How you do here, you receive your patients, you help many women, but you also do a lot of social work in your clinic. Yeah. Please tell us about that. So actually, uh, in the social work, in, in the sense, uh, I have uh, many ladies, uh, uh, especially nuns, uh, nuns from the different part of the uh, monastery, mm -hmm. from Sundu Kumbu to uh, even Sindhu Pazu, Kumbakang, yeah. All the ladies, though they used to come to Sejin for the clinic when I was there, but once it was closed, they have nowhere to go. So they've been asking where to come. So I thought of having. So usually they come. So if they have uh, some surgery to perform, some important uh, emergency things to do, if they have a shortage of a financial problem, then yeah, we try to help from our side as maximum as we can. Are the things that your clinic has now, because it's private, you, it's private, it's your clinic, you yeah. can do whatever you want, yeah. it's under your responsibility, which is very important. You, I realize that you also do education programs, that yeah. you do sessions, yeah. like uh, talks, workshops for women to yeah. educate them in uh, feminine issues, uh, feminine uh, issues, yeah. What problem. problem and uh, also with feminine hygiene, with feminine uh, situations that are corresponding to women, for example, when they are pregnant, uh, when they after their delivery, because some of women don't deal very well with uh, after delivery. And Dr. Kunsan Clinic also does this kind of educational programs and talks to explain, clarify these women about this kind of topics that is not uh, talked in, especially in Nepali society, right? It's very close. It's not much talk in no. the Nepali society. Usually, yeah, usually we uh, talk about uh, all this family planning, contraception, yeah, this kind of thing. We use uh, when they were ladies after delivery, if they don't want to, children so mm -hmm. uh, we counsel them about the contraception and the when she she can conceive next this kind of talk we give mm -hmm. and for the nuns we talk about the menstrual hygiene <laughs> uh, last time morning we had an lgbtqit uh, group so we did a, mm -hmm. uh, a pre camp for mm -hmm. them so that to uh, create a space for them where they can go easily because they also have face uh, very difficulties to go around to check out yeah, I know. Uh, this is another thing I, uh, Dr. Kunzan always uh, did and always was uh, very diligent, was helping nuns. And uh, that was one of the reasons uh, we started by helping nuns, right? Yeah, In yeah. Lotto's heart. Yeah, from Lotto's we start heart. by helping the nuns and yeah. female hygiene. Yeah. I think that was the main point yeah. in that time. But until today, in her private clinic, she still helping the nuns. So can you imagine what is to have your private clinic, your private business, but have the social responsibility and yeah. keep serving your community? You don't have only financial goals. You also have human rights goals. And here is the female, female rights, uh, the female uh, health uh, to have a better society because if female are health, uh, healthier, they can be better moms, they can be more happy yeah, sure. and they, of course, can bring uh, a lot of joy to society. So uh, you have uh, a lot of cases of sexual transmissible diseases. Yeah, here. many. Uh, we have this kind of thing. So we, we, we do treatment and we counsel them 
and uh, now cervical cancer is another issue so we have many cancer yeah cervical, cervical cancer. cancer yeah mm. so we encourage them to have a screening every year mm. and not only that uh, those uh, small girls so we encourage them to take a vaccine for mm. Uh, HPV, mm. HPV, HPV. Yeah. yes, papillomavirus we are yeah. talking about, yeah. Mm. So this is one of the problems is uh, in Nepal, like uh, many women have uh, diseases that came from sexual transmissible diseases and then they don't know very well how to deal. They don't know much, for example, about the papillomavirus. They need some clarification and here they have sessions about yeah. that. They can have sessions that where Dr. Kunzang explain what is the papilloma virus how you should deal with that and uh, help the women to understand how they get infected and many other yeah, issues yeah. correct and how to prevent and how to prevent so uh for the uh, uh that usually yeah. women papilloma virus usually leads to a cervical cancer mm. so we counsel them and we try to uh detect mm. disease as early as possible by doing a Pap smear nowadays we go go to a liquid based cytologies yes. and at the same time we can screen the HPV yes. DNA test also we do yeah. so that uh, in the future they don't have a cervical cancer. But even though even though we have uh, some cases some cases recently after opening my clinic I think people already have a uh, came to me with a cervical cancer at a late stage where we can't uh, go do any surgery so so the uh, old mother she she just the one she just had a um, radiotherapy and the chemotherapy mm -hmm. they could not remove the uterus it mm -hmm. is already covid stage oh. so other yeah we try to do so uh, i have some cases so i i understand so very sad it's very important to educate the community Prevention starts with education, and that's what precisely Dr. Kunzang in her clinic. This is her main goal: prevention, education, and that's why you know many, many, many women here in Bauda area, all Nepal, they come from the village here yeah. to see Dr. Kunzang because she is lovely, and people trust her work very much. She's so kind with the women. You, you really don't have idea and the nuns like her very much how many nuns come to you crying and yeah. requesting help dr kunzan please tell us so usually uh um in the early days like uh, uh 10 years back 10 years ago yeah they usually they come to me at the late stage of the uh disease like uh, they've been bleeding and bleeding with a uh, uh, so problem in the uterus they thought it is a uh, it normal they don't know how much blood yeah, it is yeah. normal mm -hmm. right so they used to come to me when the hemoglobin level is almost four five so usually the normal level is around 12 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it should be more than that but usually they come to me at a four because they don't have an idea how much is bleeding is so uh yeah some we did uh, emergency admission and they said no we don't have money but yeah, we forced them to do a uh, admit and did a blood transfusion. After that, we did the surgery. Yeah. So for many times, that is also another thing I would like to tell all of you. For many times, these nuns needed surgery. Nobody sponsored, and we, Dr. Kunzang and friends, yeah, always tried to find the money to support these nuns and to do these surgeries and everything because uh unfortunately this uh, was a was a, a subject that was not discussed uh publicly, yeah, publicly yeah. uh the health of the nuns because nuns nuns are women and they have menstruation and they have a lot of problems uh infection urinary tract yeah. infection and this and that and due to the many uh, uh vows they have and many things some things are very complicated and dr kunzang always was here to help the nuns so she's very estimated and very loved by the nuns also which is great so now for your future what do you aim for this clinic what is your what is what are the things that you are trying to implement here that can help your patients and also the community uh, what do you want to bring 
So actually, uh, here uh, people think that this uh, uh, Dr. Kunsan clinic is only for the ladies. Mm. So I just want to inform that we we have a multi speciality uh, clinic. So we have all the cardiologists, gastroenterologists, uh, and physicians. So. Uh, my main aim is just i said prevention and prevention yeah. not only for the female for the male because these days so many youngsters are mm -hmm. dying from cardiac yeah, arrest yeah, yeah. Uh, brain hemorrhage so these all are things can be prevented if you can detect or decide so you should not ignore your symptoms so i just request them to come early so that we can treat and um, we can prevent uh, many Things. So to resume, men's are welcome. Yeah. Okay, this is a, a multidisciplinary clinic. Yeah. It's not only a gynecology center. This has another specialties and doctors that can also see men, yeah. and they can also help men. So everybody can come and be checked. Yeah. Okay, this is another thing. And besides that, what else do you try to implement that it's very very important? Uh, yeah. So, counseling yeah counseling about so you mean please yeah counseling so, uh, usually uh, for the post delivery cases yeah. many have a uh, uh, vaginal relax problem mm -hmm. uh, urinary incontinence they can't hold the urine for a longer time mm -hmm. they have to go for <coughs> ur urinate frequently this kind of thing we really have a problem because most of the elderly mothers they have a prolapse problem is also huge after delivery they don't have a good rest no nutrition yeah. not good nutrition so space between the children gap is also very less so after delivery, they resume their daily work very free of fast. So the prolapse is very high. Yeah. So in the early days, so we just have to say, okay, come for after when the uterus are almost down, or we do a, some kind of uh, pelvic floor repair. Now we have uh, uh, some missions, uh, high poo and radio frequency. It really works good. Well radio the, frequency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really works for the good for the those who have a, uh, in, in, in urinary incontinence, okay. incontinence yes. those who can't hold the urine for yeah. that but that yes. it's yeah so i'm happy for that yeah so she's she's also working in this area yeah. please ladies if you have this kind of problems don't be shy don't be afraid come to this clinic and talk directly with dr kunsang explain your problem and there there are always solution yeah. to this problem and you will be helped and this is very important also. It's the um, important to educate in order to people uh, don't have so much prejudice and begin to feel uh, very welcome and feel like they are at home here. Yeah, yeah. Like they have a home, they have a doctor, they have somebody that will take care and understand well their problem. Okay? So don't need to be shy, don't need to hide. Please explain so you don't get worst problems in the future with your health yeah. another thing I would like to say and I think it's very important more and more in our days because uh, at least I'm talking about for example in the West where I came from many women decide to deliver with uh, anesthesia they don't like to have any pain so they take or local anesthesia or even general yeah, anesthesia yeah, no, no, they don't take it general yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a we call is a uh, we give an anesthesia. Yeah, anesthesia. but in Europe they can. Yeah, okay. They can have that. Like you sleep, uh, then you awake. You mm -hmm. wake up, you have the baby. Yeah. So the, I, th I, in my humble opinion, I don't think this is very healthy or good. And here is one thing that I think it's precious, and you should talk also about this is preparing uh, the delivery. Yeah. Dr. Kunzang, she's also worried, like, it's more important to have a natural yeah. uh, natural delivery mm -hmm. than this uh, anesthesia delivery, this kind of problem. It's a, yeah, we, we call it a pelvis delivery. Ep we yeah. Do, yeah. Epidural, we give. Epidural, yes. Yeah. So, so in that case, we don't do a general anesthesia. Yeah, here in Nepal, yes, but yeah. in the West, it's oh, very okay. common. 
So yeah. we do a epidural. Uh, we also do a epidural and anesthesia when the the uh, ladies can't tolerate for yeah, a severe tolerate, yeah. severe pain. So the uh, it's also a helping actually rather than complicated. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, uh, important is to begin yeah. to explain yeah. to women why natural delivery is very important yeah. and especially explain it will not be hard, painful mm -hmm. if they are prepared and yeah. how they prepared they have classes here yeah. to prepare for labor this is another thing that is wonderful dr kunzang she has in her clinic classes like yoga classes yeah, to prepare ladies to deliver and also you have post -delivery. after post delivery so this is very important <laughs> join these things together prepare women for the delivery from a natural way and then after delivery try to recover their way to recover their body through yoga yeah so this also i would like to say because this is excellent and uh, i congratulate you to bring this kind of approach and go through the natural way because this is very important to female and uh, they many women should should understand that natural deliver can be simple if they are prepared yeah, for it. They should be prepared, otherwise, it's, otherwise very it's very difficult. So please, ladies, if you feel uh, uncomfortable, if you don't know much about the issue, but you would like to understand, it's just a question of sending email to the clinic yeah, or they can call. They can call or you can call or you can even visit mm -hmm. uh, in the reception. They are the assistants mm -hmm. and you can put your question and you can uh, know more about these classes to prepare for labor and how important is the preparation for uh, delivery okay so what else do you want to give some message to women to our guests to uh, please give your message they so, will be looking uh, for uh, not only that uh post uh, delivery usually had the uh, lady really goes through uh, very difficulties uh, some they have a um, lactating problem, they, uh, milk is not separating, mm -hmm. so they really go through a tough time. So, so most, uh, some of them have a psychiatric problem, postpartum blues, this, this kind Depression. of thing. Yeah. So to come out from there, uh, so uh, now we are trying to gather all the ladies, those who have already delivered, so that they can come and uh, share their experience with each other and those who wants to do uh, some kind of yoga with the uh, carrying the babies with ah, them. yes yes so yes. today also we have that session oh, so good. they can go through it yeah it's, very uh, good yeah. but you want to give some special message to all these ladies nepalese ladies that are listening to us now uh you want to give some message you can give in english and then in nepalese yeah. so these nepalese ladies can uh, understand like yeah Whatever uh, you want to nothing say. special uh, things yeah we all been doing this but if you do have any problem uh don't try to hide your problem so it is uh it is always important to listen to your body rather than uh, after going through a, a big complication so try to listen in your body and do a regular checkup at least once or twice a year so those who are above 30 i think that is very important this day because of our uh, hygiene not only hygiene dietary and lifestyle modification so many diseases uncommunicable diseases are increasing very rapidly not only in the older people even in the younger people so uh, try to identify your disease and visit your nearby clinic as soon as early as possible. You can also say in Nepali, please. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Nepali, I was able to get a lot of people who are in Nepali. अनि जति पनि आफ्नो रोगहरु केही छ भने चाहिँ आफ्नो नजिकको स्वास्थ्य चौकीतिर गएर चाहिँ पहिले नै परीक्षण गरेर के अलिकति उमेर पुगिसकेको 30 पछि चाहिँ भन्नु पर्छ चाहिँ आफ्नो जेनेरल चेकअपहरुको हेल्प गरे गरेपछि चाहिँ प्राय डिजिजहरु पहिले नै थाहा पाउँछ र त्यसको पनि अर्ली नै उपचार गरे भने चाहिँ पछि चाहिँ हामीले चाहिँ समस्यामा पर्दैन भन्न चाहन्छु र केही छ भने यहाँ आउन चाहिँ एभ्री टाइम एनी वन इज वेलकम टु आवर क्लिनिक थ्याङ्क यू थ्याङ्क यू सो मच फर बीइंग देयर आई हेभ टु थ्याङ्क 
Dr. Kunsan for receiving me so well, for being such a wonderful human being, such a wonderful woman, very Thank strong you. woman, determined, dedicated. And if you come here, you can really feel she loves what she does. And that is very important. And she made all this with all her love. You will feel when you come. So thank you for being there. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank Kunzan. You. Thank you so much. You, yeah. And uh, enjoy, have a wonderful time, and never forget uh, women, women health issues. Yeah. This is very important for a better world. Thank you. Take care. Namaste. Namaste.